Cuddy opened his eyes. You're alive? said Detritus. The dwarf gingerly removed his helmet. There was a gouge in the rim, and his head ached. Looks like a mild skin abrasion, said Detritus. A what? Oh, Cuddy grimaced. What about you, anyway? he said. There was something odd about the troll. It hadn't quite dawned on him what it was, but there was definitely something unfamiliar, quite apart from all the holes. I suppose the armor was some help, said Detritus. He pulled out the straps of his breastplate. Five discs of metal slid out at a round belt level. If it hadn't slowed them down, I'd be seriously abraded. What's up with you? Why are you talking like that? Like what, pray? What happened to the me big troll talk? No offense meant. I'm not sure I understand. Cuddy shivered and stamped his feet to keep warm. Let's get out of here. He trotted to the door. It was shut fast. Can you knock it down? No. If this place wasn't troll-proof, it'd be empty. Sorry. Detritus? Yes? Are you all right? Only there's steam coming off your head. I do feel... Uh... Detritus blinked. There was a tinkle of falling ice. Odd things were happening in his skull. Thoughts that normally ambulated sluggishly around his brain were suddenly springing into vibrant, coruscating life, and there seemed to be more and more of them. My goodness, he said to no one in particular. This was a sufficiently untroll-like comment that even Cuddy, whose extremities were going numb, stared at him. I do believe, said Detritus, that I am genuinely cogitating. How very interesting. What do you mean? More ice cascaded off Detritus as he rubbed his head. Of course, he said, holding up a giant finger. Superconductivity. What? You see, brain of impure silicon, problem of heat dissipation, daytime temperature too hot, processing speed slows down, weather gets hotter, brain stops completely, trolls turn to stone until nightfall, i.e. colder temperature, however lower temperature enough, brain operates faster and... I think I'm going to freeze to death soon, said Cuddy. Detritus looked around. There are small glazed apertures up there, he said. Too high to reach, even if I sit on your shoulders, mumbled Cuddy, slumping down further. Ah, but my plan involves throwing something through them to attract help, said Detritus. What plan? I have, in fact, eventuated twenty-three, but this one has a ninety-seven percent chance of success said Detritus, beaming. Have I got anything to throw? said Cuddy. I have, said Detritus, scooping him up. Do not worry. I can compute your trajectory with astonishing precision, and then all you will need to do is fetch Captain Vimes or Carrot or someone. Cuddy's feeble protests described an arc through the freezing air and vanished along with the window glass. Detritus sat down again. Life was so simple when you really thought about it and he was really thinking. He was 76% sure he was going to get at least 7 degrees colder. Elsewhere, Mr. Cut Me Own Throat Dibbler, purveyor, merchant, venturer, and all-round salesman, had thought long and hard about going into ethnic foodstuffs, but it was a natural career procession. The old sausage-in-a-bun trade had been falling off lately, while there were all these trolls and dwarfs around with money in their pockets, or wherever it was, trolls kept their money, and money in the possession of other people had always seemed to throat to be against the proper natural order of things. Dwarfs were easy enough to cater for, rat on a stick was simple enough, although it meant a general improvement in Dibbler's normal catering standards. On the other hand, Trolls were basically, when you got right down to it, no offense meant, speak as you find, basically, they were walking rocks. He'd sought advice about troll food from Chrysoprase, who was also a troll, although you'd hardly know it anymore. He'd been around humans so long, he wore a suit now, and, as he said, he had learned all kinds of civilized things, like extortion, money lending at 300% interest per month, and stuff like that. Chrysoprase might have been born in a cave above the snow line on some mountain somewhere, but five minutes in Akmorpork and he'd fitted right in. Dibbler liked to think of Chrysoprase as a friend, 
you'd hate to think of him as an enemy. Throat had chosen today to give his new approach a try. He pushed his hot food barrow through streets broad and narrow, crying, Sausages! Hot sausages! In a bun! Meat pies! Get them while they're hot! This was by way of a warm-up. The chances of a human eating anything off Dibbler's barrow, unless it was stamped flat and pushed under the door after two weeks on a starvation diet, was by now remote. He looked around conspiratorially. There were always trolls working in the docks, and took the cover off a fresh tray. Now then, what was it? Oh yes. Dolomitic conglomerates! Get your Dolomitic conglomerates here! Manganese nodules! Manganese nodules! Get them while they're... Ah, uh, nodule-shaped! He hesitated a bit, and then rallied. Promise! Promise! Two for a dollar! Roast limestones! A few trolls wandered up to stare at him. You, sir, you look... Hungry? said Dibbler, grinning widely at the smallest troll. Wanna try our shale in the bun? Mm-mm! Taste that alluvial deposit, know what I mean? CMOT Dibbler had a number of bad points. But species prejudice was not one of them. He liked anyone who had money, regardless of the color and shape of the hand that was preferring it. For Dibbler believed in a world where a sapient creature could walk tall, breathe free, pursue life, liberty, and happiness, and step out towards the bright new dawn. If they could be persuaded to gobble something off Dibbler's hot food tray at the same time, this was all to the good. The troll inspected the tray suspiciously and lifted up a bun. Urgh, yuck, he said. It's got all ammonites in it. Yuck. Pardon? said Dibbler. It's shale, said the troll. It's stale. Lovely and fresh, just like Mother used to hew. Yeah, and there's bloody quartz all through this granite, said another troll, towering over Dibbler. Clogs the arteries, quartz. He slammed the rock back on the tray. The trolls ambled off, occasionally turning around to give Dibbler a suspicious look. Stale? Stale? How can it be stale? It's rock! shouted Dibbler after them. He shrugged. Oh well, the hallmark of a good businessman was knowing when to cut your losses. He closed the lid of the tray and opened another one. Whole food! Whole food! Rat! Rat! Rat on a stick! Rat in a bun! Get them while they're dead! Get your- There was a crash of glass above him, and Lance Constable Cuddy landed head first in the tray. There's no need to rush! Plenty for everyone! said Dibbler. Pull me out, said Cuddy in a muffled voice. Or pass me the ketchup. Dibbler hauled on the dwarf's boots. There was ice on them. Just come down the mountain, have you? Where's the man with the key to this warehouse? If you liked our rat, then why not try our fine selection of- Cuddy's axe appeared almost magically in his hand. I'll cut your knees off, he said. Garage shock of the butcher skill is who you want. Right. Now please take the axe away. Cuddy's boots skidded on the cobbles as he hurried off. Dibbler peered at the broken remains of the cart. His lips moved as he calculated. Here, he shouted. You owe, hey, you owe me for three rats. 